CIT 124 Introduction to Security. Uh, we are going to start this new chapter on Introduction to Security. Since you know that security is the biggest concern these days out there. There are lots of things going on as far as the digital world is concerned. Um, every day you hear new viruses are coming, uh, worm, uh, different worms, uh, then different malwares, um, uh, lots of different problems on the networks, penetration, security, loopholes, and then uh, hackers are always trying to get access to uh, the resources and the information. So uh, being uh, computer students or being the information security specialists, we must know how to protect our computers. We must know how to protect our infrastructure. We must know how to protect our organization in order to make sure that whatever we are doing on our computers is 100% safe and no one is getting access to those things. Now, nowadays, most important thing is the data, the information. What's the main motive behind if someone wants to gain access to your organization or to your Wi-Fi network or to your bank or anything which is of public interest? They want to get the information about the customers. Now, what would they do with that information? First of all, they'll try to track the users, their patterns, what they like, what they don't like, what kind of uh, um, buying uh, patterns they have, uh, their credit card details, their financial details, their bank balances, uh, their addresses, and all those different sort of things. So that's what they are actually targeting. On the other hand, there are different kind of hackers who are actually looking to disrupt the entire network. They want to close the services, they want to affect the network, they want to suspend the services, they want to damage the services, they want to stop you from doing what you are doing on daily basis. Now there are different kind of hackers which are dedicated towards different kind of organizations. Some are looking for financial gain. When we say financial gain, they are looking or they are targeting financial institutions, banks, where, from where they can get the credit card details. Once they successfully penetrate in the network, they get all the details about the credit cards and then they sell it into black market. Black market is deep dark web. The worst thing where they can sell all this, these things and they are being sold out and purchased over there using bitcoins, where you cannot trace that actually who purchased it and who is selling it. Illegal and it's under the uh, um, country's rules and regulations. It's not allowed to do all those things, but still they do. And then we who are into the information security, we dig out and we bring it to justice. Now that's about the banks. For the educational institutions, they are looking for details about the students, their ID numbers, their national ID numbers, and then their details, and then they try to sell out that information to the marketing companies. Or maybe uh, the companies who are interested in collecting the uh, information about the users, different kind of marketing mediums are there, all that sort of information. Now some are looking for hacking into the information for the, uh, for the hospitals. In hospitals, they know the details of the patients, their insurance details, their credit card details, their family history, their relatives, and all those other kind of things. So it depends what kind of organization you are working and it depends what are your important assets. If a penetration happens, penetration means if someone from outside successfully manages to enter your organization, they'll try to do certain things. Now you don't know what they are there for. 
you don't know what actually they would be doing you don't know what they are targeting so it's your responsibility to find out that how they penetrated inside the organization what was the entry point where they went from there and what kind of damages they actually tried to make or they were targeting for which you stopped them now how do we stop it in order to stop it we have only one thing which is the knowledge and proper tools in order to tackle these kind of situations when i am saying the knowledge it means that your information security team must be equipped with the latest trends in the market they must be aware of what's going on in in the industry they must be aware of the latest outbreak of any lethal or dangerous virus which is out there penetrating the networks tools when we say that you must need certain tools in order to protect yourself and your organization it means that you must have proper antivirus and you must have proper firewall solutions with the help of which you can protect your assets now antivirus solutions are available out there their definitions must be updated it means that it must have all the latest updates and if there is an outbreak anywhere in the world the antivirus company will update their antivirus solution giving you a protection against that latest kind of malware or spyware or a virus which could affect you and your organization whereas on the other hand firewalls will protect you from any external threat which is coming in or which might affect your organization you can allow that i have these servers within my organization and i want to i want to expose certain servers to the outside world whereas rest of the servers will be used within the organization now what do i mean by that there are certain services which you want them to be available or exposed to the outside world so that the users can communicate example in dcc format like in in an educational institution if you want to access your email from outside we'll have to allow our our mail server to be exposed to the outside world so that if you are going to check your email you'll enter your username and password it would be authenticated and you'll be able to log in now your username and passwords are managed on active directories active directories are the servers on which we are creating your username and passwords now our mail server would talk to active directory which is the server maintaining your username and passwords that okay this user entered this username and password if it's right and it's authentic it would let you log in and check your email if the username and password will not match it would not allow you to log in now we exposed our mail server to the outside world but we did not expose our active directory which is managing our username and passwords because we don't need to our this mail server will be talking to our active directory which is maintaining the username and passwords and they'll have a secure internal communication whereas the front end of the email will be exposed to the outside world now once that server is exposed to the outside world we'll not keep it open you might have read about the ports that we have on the servers it communicates through the ports like in order to send and receive email for example we have opened a port 443 or we might have opened a port um, which is different than 443 it could be anything we can choose it ourselves now if we are allowing for example port 443 we'll tell our firewall that allow access to this server only through port 443 rest of the ports will be blocked so that's how we protect our servers from any kind of threats not only that we'll block all open ports on that server 
will allow very limited communication which is required for the outside world to this server and so on. So that's how we keep our services secure. Now question is, we have the best antivirus solution installed. We have the best firewall installed for our organization which would protect us from any kind of penetrations from outside. Are we 100% secure? Of course not. You can never stop the robberies taking place in the general world. You can never stop 100% how the penetrations and all those security problems are there on the networks. You can try your best, but you cannot stop it 100% permanently and completely. Reason is, every other day there is a new virus. Every other day there is a new penetration. Every other day there are new tools, there are new techniques which hackers are coming up with and they are using those technologies in order to penetrate in your network. Okay? Now, there are lots of other examples that you might see in your book. They are talking about different challenges which are there in nowadays uh, market. As I discussed, they are targeting the banks, uh, they are doing the robberies, and then um, even the airplanes are not safe these days because they are connected to the internet. They are even trying to hijack the overall navigation system on the airplanes. Thus, they try sometimes to hijack the airplanes as well. Now phone tracking is there, they, 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 they are tracking the telephones, trying to come up with the ideas with the help of which they can trace uh, the cellular networks. They are launching the attacks by using different computers, laptops, PCs, mobiles and tablets and whatnot. Nowadays there is a new concept that you might have heard called BYOD called bring in your own device. Now what happens with that is, suppose in your organization, you have the best antivirus solution available. You have the best firewall installed in your organization. But you have installed all those solutions on the computers that the organization has provided you. Like when you come to the university, all the computers that you are using in the student labs are provided by the university. They have an antivirus solution installed on it. They have updated windows installed on it and they have all the latest patches applied on the operating system which is protecting it from any kind of external threats. Now, you are coming from outside, you have your own USB and you connect it to these computers. Now, we have an antivirus solution software available. Immediately it would detect it and it would delete the virus from your USB. Suppose the antivirus definition <clears throat> is not updated on the computer, what would happen? That virus would be copied from your USB to the computer. Now, the firewall is smart enough to block it so that it cannot go outside your organization, but the virus is copied on the computer. Now, since all the computers are connected using networking, it can replicate itself from one computer to another, thus affecting the entire organization. That's why antivirus solutions are constantly pushing the latest updates to the, um, to the main update server so that all the computers or all the servers globally are updated and they have the protection against that latest kind of malware. As soon as the latest definition or the update has been copied or forced or updated on the antivirus solution, it would immediately have a cure against the virus which was copied in the organization. And once it would run, it would clean all instances of it from the network. That's how antivirus solutions work. Now that was an example of the PCs which are there in the university. Suppose a student comes in in an organization and he's carrying his own laptop or a mobile phone or a tablet and they connect their laptop, mobile phone or a tablet 
to the Wi-Fi of the university. What's going to happen? We don't have any antivirus solution installed on your laptops, on your mobile, or your tablet. So there are high chances that if any of your these devices are affected or loaded with these kind of viruses, there are high chances that they'll travel from your computer or your mobile or tablet to the network of the organization. That's why we keep a close eye on what's going on on the network, uh, how much traffic is being generated by the computers, if there is an abnormal activity going on within our organization or anything, we keep track of it through that. And then they go to the identity thefts, which your book is talking about as well. Identity theft is they are trying to steal your information, which is related to you. Now, why is it so important for anyone else who is not part of that organization? What people do uh, in the outside world, hackers and all those guys who are looking for this kind of information, they get your address, they get your national ID card number and they get your full name, date of birth, mobile phone. And then they go to any bank or by accessing the bank network, they'll try to generate new credit cards or debit cards using your details. Now you won't be even aware of the thing that your information has been leaked out to certain entities and now they are using that for their capital gain of buying the things using the online websites and the credit card which is actually registered under your name. That's why in order to have an additional security on these debit and credit cards, we have a password. Even if you'll show the credit card or you'll use the credit card online, it asks you for a one-time password or two-factor authentication or an email is triggered at your email address through which you can enter that four-digit code before you make a purchase or before you proceed for any kind of payments and stuff. So that's the basic overview of what we call an information security. That's it for today's lecture. I'll continue again. We'll cover more topics. If you have more, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach me through my WhatsApp number or through an email.